I am Sri Master Gano Grills for Galacticus.com. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Questions and Answers. We're going to get right into it. Our first question comes from Julia Minto. And Julia Minto asks, Sri Master Gano Grills, I thank you. How is it possible to reincarnate into several beings in one lifetime? Well, I believe, Julia, that you're referring to when we just had the seminar of Hypernatural Magic and I talked about something called soul time release dispatchment. And what that means is that a soul is a very broad stream of consciousness that doesn't just occupy one physical body. A soul is capable of occupying a tassel of bodies at the same time over the course of many, many different voids and parallels at the same time. So when this occurs, it's a very interesting dynamic as these leaves falling. If you look at this tree as the soul and you look at the leaves falling down, each leaf could be part of that soul. And that shows the example of how vast the complex of the soul is. This is something that is very possible and it happens on rare occasions where you'll see someone die and then they will immediately incarnate somewhere else and express and continue the life stream of the imperative of something that they started in that old life that they just dropped. What they wanted to do was too large to fit in one lifetime. So what they've done is they have carved out another release dispatchment so that they continue their work in another body in another time frame. And this happens from time to time. When I do this seminar called The Big Picture, I actually have real case studies and pictures to prove that. And it's a very fascinating study. Our next question comes from Jamal D. Fay, And he asks, who is Hathor? I have had a connection since I was a child. Hathor is none other than Het Heru, or some people might say Heru Het. And she is the cow goddess, and she's venerated across different pantheons. She's a comedic deity, she's a netrudu, and she is also venerated in other pantheons, in the Hindu pantheon. If it wasn't for Hathor, as you say, and I've said this in other videos, the experiment of Earth would have been canceled a long time ago. So she is celebrated as deity and she's the reason why a lot of cows are not slaughtered. There's another seminar that I did called Exalted Beings and I have yet to have anyone answer this question yet. So I'll pose it to you all as a homework assignment. What was the gift that Heru gave to mankind? Something to think about. I also wanted to talk about something that I hear thrown around as a term, and it's called altar work. The problem with that terminology is that the susceptibility of the consciousness will lend itself into an automatic resistance when it hears the term work. Work is associated with toil, sweat, labor, and litigiousness. And no one really wants to participate in that. Therefore, people have a reticence of working with their altar. So I'm going to offer you something that will be more of a palatable term to your consciousness. And let's call it altar interface. Doesn't that sound better? Altar interface. Instead of working with the altar, you're going to now interface with your altar. And by virtue of you interfacing with the altar, you will unplug the association of labor, sweat, toil, and rigor when it comes time for you to interface with your altar. You will also put aside any disease, dis-ease that's associated with going to your altar and placing offerings there, burning ancestor money, talking to your ancestors, prostrating at your altar and giving yourself a very, very powerful leg up, if you will, energetically. 
I am Shree Master Gano Grills for Galacticus.com, and I will see you on the next episode of Questions and Answers. Let's <laughs> go.